you again tonight. We've been looking forward to being here with you. Round two of um, 40 Minutes, where we're discussing, and specifically, marriage and all things pertaining to marriage. I have the Moors with me this time, uh, Travis and Melissa Moore. Um, the twist tonight is, I'll just set this up and then we'll come back to it. The, the general topic is how to get your husband to change into what you need him to change into. Now, we did a real scientific data study on our congregation here at the church at Somerville Baptist Church, and we picked like the top five contestants, and, and Melissa was right in there. So she is well qualified <laughs> to talk about what influences a mate. So we're glad to have you guys. Happy Thank to be you. here. So Happy to be here. take just a second. Um, can't assume everybody knows you. A lot of the folks watching, I, I'm Sorry. sure they do. Yeah. Uh, but take a second and just tell us some basic stuff about how long you've been married, a little bit about your children and all that. Okay. We've, um, we've been married 19 years, and we first, I guess the story goes back to 1999, uh, was before we met, actually. Um, I moved to Virginia, from West Virginia, and just had been out of college about a year and didn't know anyone in this new town and started attending the church. I grew up going to church and that's that's what I knew and that's what I did. As a matter of fact, the first uh, person I met, my first friend in Virginia was her dad. Oh. And he was the he was the pastor of the church. Okay. Um, in the spring of, of 2000, I received some news that was shocking. Her father had died, mm. and it was it was pretty tragic. And I remember I went to the to the church for the funeral, and you know he was the senior pastor of church, and the people were lined up out the church and down the street. And I didn't know anyone really, um, and I stayed in the I stayed in the car and I just kind of prayed for the people in the church because I knew they were hurting. And I prayed. I said if if um, if there's something I can do for this family, Lord, show me what that is. Hmm. And I had no idea I'd end up marrying the preacher's daughter. And, and <laughs> my goodness, what was I into? You got, and, you got pretty actively involved. I got very, <laughs> yeah, yeah, I think God heard Be that Be careful what you pray for. <laughs> yeah. So anyway, um, fast forward that summer, I was uh, playing on the church softball team, and all the guys kept saying, you need to meet Melissa. But she was still a college student, all right? Uh -huh. So she wasn't around all that much. Another year passed, and I was playing softball again, and all the guys were saying, you need to meet Melissa. And I had just bought a house, and, um, you know, I was mid-20s at the most at that point and had very little money. I had stacked pizza boxes for end tables. I had no furniture, and, and I knew I needed furniture for this house. And I knew Melissa was graduating, and, uh, and I thought my plan, my master plan, was to hire her to be my interior designer. Oh. And so I kept asking, through that process, I kept asking her out, kept asking her out. She kept telling me no over and over and over again. But I was very persistent. And eventually, once the project was done, she agreed to go out with me. And uh, After I went 20% over budget. No, it was 60. Oh. 60%. 60. 60. Yes. So today I'm the proud owner of an elephant lamp that I would never <laughs> have purchased <laughs> and an oversized mirror that she thought was absolutely necessary. But I wasn't going to let him get through work to get to know me, so that I was, went 60% over budget. That's so, how we met. So and, was, uh, he, uh, was he pretty cheap then or was he a spender? He couldn't look me in the eyes. <laughs> um, so basically it was anything that, it, and when I would go and do a room, I stage it with all the accessories and all of that. So I staged that room pretty well and I said, well, if we take these items out, the room is not going to look the same and but it I didn't look as that. good. And he's like, no, I don't like it. Uh, so there's a, there's a theory there. I didn't uh, care. I just wanted yeah. to meet her, honestly. That, that was my goal. He was literally to just stalked me was from the balcony at church, if you want the true story. He was stalking you in the balcony. I did see, yeah. He did. My brother's in the choir. He saw it. It happened. So that's Ooh, why yeah. all those people yeah. sit in the balcony here. That's why I don't know. I can't, I can't say what. I know that's what I was doing. I was looking for girls, honestly. <laughs> I was in my 20s. I'm going to be honest. I mean, yeah. So anyway, we, we, uh, we did start spending some time together in the fall of, 2001, uh -huh. and I knew for sure that she was the one I was going to let her get away. Yeah. Right. Wow. I mean, it that's how I would months. say it. It was only so six months, we know. I proposed, I proposed in spring of 
the next year, mm -hmm. and I thought we'd be engaged for a while, honestly. But we were we were married in in September. Wow. That same. So we were we dated and were engaged less than a year. There you go. So there you go. We, when you uh, both it sounds like you both had a certainty about it. So I tell me so. tell me about the children. Yeah, you can tell that story. We have two children. Um, my Joseph, our Joseph, just turned um, twelve yesterday. Ah. So mm -hmm. when we first came to this church, we didn't have children. Um, right. We got involved. We had the youth group. We had the youth group. Yes. Yes. They were kids. We had the sleepover at our house. We were very young and dumb and had an entire youth group at our house. Crazy. Then we had kids. Um, but Joseph is 12. Video games till midnight. It, yeah. It was a lot. Yeah. To had had toilet paper, People the make trees. that mistake one that time. time. Yeah. yeah. And then there. It was once. Yeah. yeah. No, they kept coming back. Actually, the, they Some did. of the guys did. Yeah. Yeah. Um, but Joseph is 12 <clears throat> and our Mackenzie is 8. Uh, mm -hmm. So we have a fifth grader and a second grader. We have a, she's in ballet and he's a tennis player. All right. So. Yeah. Good deal. Good deal. Well, let's get rolling with our topic here. I know, I know Travis and, and Melissa lead a small group here in one of our Sunday school hours. And um, so they're, they're having the opportunity to influence people, roughly their age group, every single week. And as you know by now, uh, it took me a while to figure this out. Marriage is all about influence as well as a lot of other factors, too. You know, how do we get our influence and how do we give it? And so Bible's always the most wise thing. Let me just read a couple of verses from 1 Peter 3 where Peter's talking and he talks about different roles. But he says, he's talking to the wives and he says, uh, went over your husband's by your behavior, when they see the purity and reverence of your lives, your beauty should not come just from outward adornment, such as braided hair and wearing of jewelry. Instead, it should be of your inner self, the unfading beauty of a gentle and quiet spirit, which is great worth in God's eyes. For this is the way the women in the past did, he says. that The inner beauty of the soul is very, very, not only very attractive to men, but it's very influential. And so with that, I wanted to kind of jump in. First of all, uh, do you know what your, uh, the old school uh, Smalley book on love languages? You know what your love language no, I don't is? Know. Okay. I don't know. I don't know. Mine is actually, well, is no, I actions one? I don't know. I can't That's remember, remember all of them, but there's like acts of kindness. Yeah. There is time, quality time. There's affection, you know, just like the physical touch. Right. Mm -hmm. There's words of affirmation. There's, um, sir, I think I hit service. That's roughly it. Any of those? Mine's a lot of service. I do a lot of service. Probably. Um, yeah. We probably need to take that class. On the receiving yeah. end, yeah. though, <laughs> what, what means the most when he does it of those categories to you? Um, like acts of service? Acts of service, okay. right. Like it, it just randomly doing the laundry or Which saying, hey, I'll pick up the kids <laughs> or just... I'll right. pick up supper or make a reservation so you don't have to cook. Those kinds of things. Help you out. That, that I can do. That's, I yeah. make reservations. He's yeah. real good at I don't he, cook He makes very a mean either. reservation. I can make That's a nice I know I schedule reservations for restaurants uh, usually three or four months in advance because <laughs> some of these restaurants are hard to get into. <laughs> so yeah. I schedule yeah. them. So we've got schedules through uh, March, April now for different restaurants like in Charleston. It's awesome. kind of one of the things we like to do. Awesome. And, so. Tip, typically, I can't cook, so i got to do something. Oh, well, I can't either. So. Yeah. Typically, couples don't have the same <clears throat> love language. So do you know what, like, the best thing she can do for you is of those that I mentioned? Words of affirmation? I'd say, I'd say words, words of, of affirmation. affirmation. Okay. Yeah, I mean, yeah. I like I like the respect that, mm -hmm. that she gives. And if I don't feel like I'm getting it, I'll tell her. Mm -hmm. Okay. And... Uh, which usually leads to a, a difference of opinion because she feels like she's giving me respect, but I may not feel it. Right. You know what I mean? So, I, whereas I'm, I may take the initiative to plan dinners, I want, I want her to take the initiative to plan events too. Uh -huh. Do you know what I mean? Where, I she's, where she's working to make sure the house is spotless, which it usually is, and yeah. the laundry is perfect, which it usually is, and the kids are taken care of. You know, mm -hmm. I'm selfish, I want more. And that's not cool. I mean, that's not right. that's not the way it should be. But well, that's that's good. So you you're in tune with that then. And by the way, thanks for uh, some of you <clears throat> watching in and letting us know you're out there. I didn't say it at the beginning, but but log on, tell us you're out there. Debbie Varner is is watching. So good to see you. Good to know you're there, Debbie. 
um, Stacy Reed, Andy, uh, Andy Ravel is watching. I think I saw Kevin Melling's name scroll by. Jim Schumard. Thank all of you for watching, and others are too. So let's play the game real quick. How to get your husband to change according to how you want him to change. I'm going to make it really easy for you, Melissa. I'm going to give you a choice between about four categories. Okay. And you can pick the one that's the most relevant. Okay. How do I, one is how do I get him to give me his full attention when we're, I'm trying to talk to him or we're trying to communicate. One is how do I correct him <laughs> without him getting defensive. You mean he needs correct? I mean, you still want us married after this, this right? Tough. I mean, <laughs> <laughs> I would prefer. Okay. <laughs> I would prefer. One is how do I get him to share responsibilities around the house? Because yeah. that's your love language is acts of acts. acts of service mm -hmm. and kindness, right? Yeah. Another one: How do I get him to be emotionally with me and understand me versus give me how I'm supposed to fix it or give me good a, a good lecture on? advice he would give me. I don't know if that's a factor or not. Okay. Any of those? Wow. Jump at jump out at you. All right. Yes, giving me a homework here so I can kind of go over what we did. Um well I think I, I think first off I know what works for him and what doesn't in terms of how to speak to him if I have an idea or a suggestion the way it works best with Travis is to kind of plan and come up with that suggestion, but also make it feel like it's his idea and he's included. Oh, <laughs> the old psychology yes. ploy. Yes, huh? so That's there's the a little psychology, the yes. But he does, he wants to be included in, in, in all of that. No, um, not always, I don't, sometimes I don't care. <laughs> well, it depends on what it, it is. It depends on, there yeah. are a lot of things I, I you mean, just don't I, care about. I spend no. a lot of time worrying about important things, you know? Right. What is the Federal Reserve going to do with interest rates? I worry about that. You and know, I, I shouldn't, Pastor. I, I shouldn't worry about. It, but I, I or, you know, I but don't. like how you we're going to raise the kids. Chance. I mean, that's that's something that I'll let her take care of that. So, you know. By the way, one of your, I believe, one of your um, coworkers is watching Lisa Smith. Lisa. She, she's, she's watching us burn. She said, "Hello, boss man." <laughs> Hello. <laughs> Hello. Yeah, Hello, she's Lisa. watching it flame here. <laughs> yeah. So. So, so back to back to that. I can't change how he responds to things. I know how he responds to things. I've been with him for nineteen years, so right. I know when is a good time to approach him, mm -hmm. and when is a, not a good time to approach him. When he comes through the door, I can tell if he's had a hard day, a bad day. Mm -hmm let's table this conversation for later and discuss it when he's had that downtime so that we can talk about something maybe that more serious or something that mm -hmm. needs a um, an answer or, or what have you. Mm -hmm. it, I just kind of know when to approach him for those kinds of things. Um, in terms of sharing the responsibility, uh, I think a lot of times what works best for Travis is if I start doing something, mm -hmm. then he sees me doing something, and if he is actually taking a break at that time, mm -hmm. sometimes I think he goes, oh, she should, she needs a little help. And that's kind oh, of my way okay. of. So you just start doing it. it. Yes, I just start doing things. So you're motivated um, to volunteer. You don't like to be told, to. but you, you don't mind volunteering then. I'm happy to volunteer. Mm -hmm. it, it's hard to sit there and do nothing while she's working, you know. So I've got to do my, I've got to do something. But but at the same time, I mean, we have like every household, we have our our chores have our and roles. our responsibilities. Sure, sure. That makes she, it work. she hasn't started a lawnmower in 20 years. Mm. Right. You know, she hasn't picked up a stick in 20 years. <laughs> she hasn't trimmed a head. It's, I did the you know, just did one. you? Just one. But I mean, I probably haven't prepared more than a dozen meals honestly since we've been married right and i tried i you wasn't good to. at it that's probably so, a good thing you don't want right? to. Yeah. but you know we have our responsibilities that 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 work for us i mean she doesn't pay the bills i do that right. you know so when it, it works you know there's not a question of if, is this going to get done or is that we, it'll get done does he ever do the 
like, I'm going to make a mess of this chore, this detail, so that she won't want to ask me again. So I'm going to look like I'm just totally inept no, at this. No, I wouldn't this. do that. I wouldn't do that. <laughs> I, don't, I don't think so. I don't he, think so. He may have one time with cooking. No, but I, I th run really bad. I think he bad. legitimately I tried, really actually. I really don't know what I'm doing thing. in the kitchen. <laughs> he I just know. didn't know. It I don't just know. didn't work My out mom so well. always <laughs> cooked for me, and then, yeah. no, I just... I, I'm just really bad. I did learn how to make fudge this Christmas. Yes, he did. Wow. And That's I made way impressive. too much, but but yeah, it's And our son is learning so to cook. So I can cook. make fudge. And our daughter is learning to cook, so Other than that, and I'm, laundry and do all those things. I make things, reservations. So. That's what I make. <laughs> That's but hard we all job. Have, we have our strengths job. and our weaknesses. Yeah. Um, but I think in, in, you know, in circling back, I think in in discussing different topics with Travis for for us, it's the timing thing. And if we catch each other and we've got a million things right, in our head right. and something's not working, we just know at this point and can read each other so well that we know when to discuss certain topics right? because of things that, that may be on our, our mind and, and knowing that it's going to be at a better time than another. So, right. for so us, that works. So, do you announce ahead of time, like, hey, when you get home tonight, we need to have a talk? Ooh. <laughs> or do you send him a text and say, no, what time are you going to be home because we no. need to have no. a sit-down, no. serious discussion? No. Do you do that? I really don't. Praise the Lord. No. no. Because that's like a death scene. I really, I really don't. We, we, we text and talk during the day, and we don't, we don't schedule meetings to go no. through yeah. decisions that need to be made, typically. I don't think we do. If it's you know, if it's something in the, that pertains to the children, it's usually I'll call him during the day, depending yeah, on the I mean, timeline and when an answer is needed. That's good. But it's, um, not, it's not like a so. Set. So when is a good time to catch him? Like in general, you cannot during the day. You just kind of, if he doesn't answer, he's in a meeting. You right. just know that he just back off because um, his schedule is so different every day. Mm -hmm. um, so it's just kind of catching them when I can. Um, one of the best times for us, though, is when the children are down after 8 o'clock, the lunches are packed, the backpacks are ready, the homework's okay. been done, all of that's been done so that we can take a breath. Because if we're trying to talk knowing that we've got this, this schedule for our children that works best for them so yep. that they can function the next day, everything's running smoothly, if we try and talk in the middle of that and I'm cleaning up supper, it, it's not going to be good. Right. But that's not entirely true either. Because a lot of days I'm asleep by 7.30. <laughs> Which so. is true. <laughs> Which is true. Some of those days so I'm just, be a I, am just, I watch, I go in right. and you'll appreciate, I watch, I watch, watch what, I, what I watch every evening. Supper. At least three episodes of Andy Griffith's show. And if I'm awake at the end like of it. Like we'd be the most boring <laughs> Maybe <Alan> Jeopardy. <laughs> and, they and do one pilot on us and be eight like. Eight, eight, eight yeah. o'clock. I mean, I'm pretty much, you know, I'm laying down or I'm in my recliner or I'm. Well, hey, that Andy Griffith, you're pouring into your I mean, marriage. That, I knew you were God. I'm married. trying. That's, that's why. I'm trying. Um, yeah. So, just, so, yeah. So that so that's good to know. It, it's kind of as you as you can <coughs> grab the time, but you know your patterns well. I know enough. the patterns, and I know yeah. the moods, and I know what what's a good time to approach. Yeah, it, and so. there's less distraction mm -hmm. because if you pick the wrong time. <coughs> I know the way I am, it's like you're going to get name, rank, and maybe serial number, and that's it. It's like, mm, I'm not giving anything to shoot at here. And that's totally wrong, <laughs> but that that leads to, like, it's, it'd be better than we if just we just don't. Talk. We don't like conflict. We don't like fighting. I don't, I don't, don't like tension. I don't like any of that. So if we can time it to where we're both clear-headed and we don't have a million things running through our head. And we don't fight. We really, I mean, we have differences of, uh, differences of opinion about certain things, but we don't, Good. We don't fight. Well, let me jump we in there a minute. There's a lot of things we don't worry about, you know? That, that's a little bit unusual, I think, with a lot of couples, and that's related to, I think I just wrote down correct without being defensive, but let's say, <clears throat> Let's say he's like, he's out of bounds on something you feel like, and you're going to have to confront that, Neither one, knowing now that neither one of you like conflict yeah. or, right. or confrontation. How are you going to break that out? I don't know of a scenario, but um, how do you normally go about that? I think once again for him, it's timing, and once again for me, so that, that I can make sure that I don't blow up 
I need to take a step back right. and figure out the timing that, that I'm calm enough to be able to have a good conversation with him. Um, the way that we should, respectfully, right. anything like that. But we, we're not the type that are going to sit there and name call each other and, and slam doors, and that's, mm. that's not our style. Now, um, our kids have never heard yelling or screaming or... Mm -hmm. I can read her. I mean, when she's upset, I can tell. I mean, and believe it or not, as as outgoing as I am, I am actually more the introvert. He is more the one that would like to discuss and and do all of that, and I'm the one that it's actually very hard for me to say what mm -hmm. I need to say. Has it always been like this, or in the early days, did you have to learn some things the hard way? I think I've always been. I've I'm more of a closed book, and that's not a good thing. It's not a good quality. Um, and I hold a lot of things in. Um, you, you've, you've always been guarded. But I've always been very, very guarded, and that's just You've protected, that's just you. you've protected mm -hmm. yourself because I think you've been hurt mm -hmm. at different times by different different people. Yeah. And I've got to be sensitive to that. You know? mm -hmm. But he's so. one that when he has something on his mind, though, he will just... <clears throat> blah, 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 blah. It's pretty direct. Yes. Yeah, okay. Be direct. Is that is that okay, or sometimes that? Um, sometimes. Sometimes. Maybe. <laughs> not get received well. We're not perfect people. So um, all right, <laughs> let's play that scenario out. He's too direct. He get he kind of nails you inside mm -hmm. here. It's like, oh, mm -hmm. that hurt, and I'm not sure I like that. Mm -hmm. What do you do at that point? You just you just um, kind of. A lot of times I close up. She will. You just close. I close up. up and I don't say anything because I think when it gets to that point and somebody is so passionate about something, um, I just think you need to take a step back right? and you need to just kind of chill um, until you can take that time and rationally talk about it mm. a little bit later. Mm -hmm. um, so later, so, is yes. there a time when you circle yes. back yeah, around Yeah, you always and make say, sure that you finish. What I need we to... never go, we don't, we don't go to bed mad. Mm -hmm. That's never just, have. that's a rule. Which is a biblical thing. Right. Ephesians 4 actually y'all sheds a lot of light on just some some quality basics. Um, one of the verses of Ephesians 4 says, the first thing we always have to guard is the truth. Now, sometimes there's the, the too abrupt, too direct, tr truth without love, as the Bible says, and we're not talking about that. But the one thing that couples realize right away, uh, sometimes the hard way is, do not shade, withhold, deny the truth, if, even if it's going to hurt, even if it's going to disappoint the other person, try to at least present and stick to the truth. Because if you lose that, you lose trust. Mm -hmm. If you lose trust, now there is really no communication mm -hmm. other than scheduling and things like that. Mm -hmm. Another is keep it positive. Even You can have a pretty good fight. And, and still keep it positive, though. And you're probably a pretty good psychologist because you've already said <laughs> I'm making it, making him think that everything's his idea anyway. So, um, <laughs> um, but you know, that's that's the thing of affirming each other. And in some encounters I've had, I've told couples, I said, "Look, y'all, it can get a little bit intense, and it can get heated as long as you have the security." of your relationship because if you start to fear for the relationship that conflict either gets more edge to it or more hurtful or you or both sides just close down and nothing happens it's almost like we can really have a hard discussion here and it can get heated but i know and you know i'm not going anywhere mm -hmm. And you're not going anywhere so we can we can resolve this even if we get our feelings hurt that's much more <clears throat> healthy than to withhold hurt and feelings because you're afraid the relationship's going to cave in. Mm -hmm. And that's something that we've we've always said. There'll be times when I just I just don't like you very much. <laughs> I love you, <laughs> but I don't like you very much. Yes. And that does not by any means when when I make a commitment, I make right. a commitment and it's for life and I made that right. with our with our marriage and that foundation is there and it was in front of our family, but most importantly, God. Yeah. And when I make that commitment, I make that commitment, and I don't take that lightly. Um, so when we have disagreements, I look at them, I say, well, you're still stuck with me. I mean, it's just yeah. what it is. So we might as well get over this because you're still gonna see me in the morning. You know, I've heard it's so. cheaper to keep her, too. 
<laughs> I heard that from a, from someone in my Sunday school class. I actually spoken mentioned like that. a true financial oh, stop, analyst. Oh, stop, 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 By the way, no, that was from. So, it's a joke. <laughs> one of our dear friends in, that, that we spend some time with, and that's one of the things they say. Yeah. Cheaper to keep her. Cheaper to keep her. No, but no, we we don't even. We don't really have those thoughts ever to even no. consider. He goes out of town a lot and travels right. and all of that. It's just there's that trust there that honestly, bad thoughts and what if and what if are, we don't have worry about never it. in our 19 years of that's, marriage ever that's been huge. that way. That's huge. Well, uh, Cindy is watching. Donna Wiling is watching. Danny Ritchie is watching. Barbara Taylor West is watching. And Julie, hey, du Ju Julie Dugan, I believe, Hi, before Julie. I saw her name scroll by, you probably know her. So the third leg of that stool I mentioned from Ephesians 4, I might as well finish that out too and ask you guys how you do this. The other thing that we have to be w able to do in a good marriage is to forgive and to, be, and to for ask for forgiveness. Mm -hmm. Spend a lot of time doing that. Mm -hmm. And so... Here's my, here's my question about the way you're wired up. Is it easier for you to say, I blew it, will you forgive me? Or is it easier for you to say, oh, no, I forgive you? Which conversely means it'd be a little bit harder for you to admit that you're wrong or that you can get over it and forgive somebody. Mm -hmm. Is that clear? I think it's hard for, for both of us. We, we both... <laughs> <laughs> like to think that we're right, right. In, a, in a situation that's just natural um, so I think that is something to to admit hey I've messed up it's it's just a, na a natural thing um, I know that that is probably difficult for you yeah one one time I thought I was wrong but I was wrong so <laughs> I'm just kidding this is what I'm dealing bad, with bad jokes <laughs> bad 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 jokes I, I'll stick with Andy Griffith there you go yeah no, no, there you go Andy would have admitted he was wrong no I'm wrong all the time I'm, I'm wrong all the time and it is hard to admit of course yeah. um, right but sometimes it's I think it's part of just growing, growing up. up you acknowledge yeah I dropped the ball yeah. You know, to yeah. use baseball terminology, yeah, I, I committed the error. All right. I own it. It's in the book. So will I'm you hearing, for, will you forgive me? You know. Yeah, so. I'm hearing both of you say that's probably the harder of the two is to is to admit that you were the one who messed up. And I think that goes back to Travis and I are, are perfectionists at what we do. Mm -hmm. Anything that we do do, we always end up being leaders of everything that we've we've ever done. Um, and so when you have those types of personalities um, and always making sure that things are, are just so or um, that every event is just just right or, or whatever, I think it's hard when you have that type of personality. Right. It's just a personality trait. So it's hard to admit even more, I think, that, that you're wrong um, well, because you work so hard right. not to be wrong. Right. Yeah. If you, plus, if you're really passionate about something. Right. It's easy to right. to be misled yourself into feeling like, well, it's got to be right because I'm so sure of the path here. And that's what leaders do. L leaders know they have to be decisive and they have to be certain even when there's a lot of uncertainty around it or else you're not leading. People are not following you. So then when you get to the end of that trail and you realize, oh, man, mm -hmm. I was wrong. wrong. That takes a lot. And that's, mm -hmm. a, that's a gut punch, but I think when you can look back at something that maybe you've even led and you, you go, you know what? Yeah, I was wrong. But you learn from that experience so that you can go on and be a better leader, a better wife, a better spouse, what have you. Um, yeah, so true or false, in one of those encounters, there's a, there's a little bit of conflict, there's got to be an admission of, of I was wrong and an apology maybe. Does that hurt your relationship or strengthen your relationship? I think it strengthens it. To admit that you messed up. It yeah. definitely strengthens it. It's humbling. It is. It strengthens for sure. Absolutely mm -hmm. it does. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And that's another fallacy that mm -hmm. especially younger couples don't get, especially guys, if I can speak to us. It's mm -hmm. like, man, if I admit, I don't know how to do it. If I admit I messed mm -hmm. up, she's going to finally figure out that I don't have all the answers and I'm not as good as I want, you know, that I hope she thinks I am. And it'll all be over. But it draws you closer. <clears throat> it actually it sometimes. It draws you closer. The, the, yeah, the the honesty and the humility, mm -hmm. as you said, those are key. Those are cornerstones mm -hmm. to a marriage. They because really are. Because it takes two. It takes two of you. You don't always have to be this 
high leader that has all the answers. Mm -hmm. You don't because you're team. You're a team. Exactly, and re and remember who our model is: Christ, exactly. who was more honest than Christ, right. spoke the truth all the time, and who mm -hmm. was more humble mm -hmm. than Christ. Mm -hmm. Nobody. But don't, but don't you think sometimes people go into a marriage or into any relationship and they aren't uh, completely forthright before they go into Absolutely. it? Absolutely. And yeah. you know, I, I heard a story recently of a of a gentleman who had served in Korea and Vietnam, and he. He was a good person. He retired from the military, um, but he would never go to church with his wife. Yeah. She was there every time the doors were open, but he would never go. And she would say to him, honey, will you go? Will you go? And he still said no. And eventually it came out. Um, the things he had done and things he had ordered other people to do during times of war, he was ashamed of. Mm. And in his mind, church wasn't the place for him because he had earned hell. He'd gone too far. He had gone too far, but he didn't want his wife to know his past. You know, so I think mm -hmm. it takes having having that just brutal honesty. Yep. Saying this is where I've been, and you know, once she understands that, then perhaps she can put him in touch with the right person who can counsel him and talk to him. And, but until then, he's going to feel hopeless. You exactly know? And right. what, a, what a horrible feeling that would be to live your life thinking that God doesn't want to have anything to do with you because of yeah. something you've done in the past. It's a shame, a shame, a shame. type of mm -hmm. mentality. Yeah, I mean, it's that... a, like spiritually crippled. And he was, you know, well, it's almost so like distraught at even He didn't even want to tell his wife about it. Hmm. You know, so I think you never know. There's things going on in people's lives that. Well, before time it's... runs out on us, now you've opened up a door there. I know that, that you both are qualified to speak into. So now let's come around on, okay, we got we got a husband and wife team here that are teaming up to do ministry in the church through a small group Bible study. Yeah. You, you see what I see a lot, and that is, um, a very faithful young lady who's dragging three little ones across the parking lot, and she's like, she's they've been at it, and she is harried, and she's already tired, and it's only 10 till 9 in the morning on Sunday morning. She gets them deposited to their places, and then she runs down to the worship center, or she runs into your class for the, her Bible study hour, and it's like, a, a real pain and exasperation because he's not here. He's doing it alone. And, and he doesn't have to be away. He's not having to work. He's not on deployment with the military. He is choosing to not participate in what, of course, we believe is the most important hour of the whole week. So are there some things you can do, do to encourage, whether it's a husband or a wife who are the one coming solo, to encourage them, what have you found maybe some in some cases helps with guys, whether it's unresolved guilt or unresolved grief or whatever? I mean, it goes both ways. I mean, you see right. you see gentlemen coming alone as well, mm -hmm. and you see the ladies, and it does, it breaks your heart. Um, you got to get to the... Got to get to the You got to get to the root of it. Yeah. You know, I, go back to the, to the 80s. How many young men were shunned by leaders in a church because they wore their hair a little too long? You know? Yeah. Um, how, how many people walked into a church and someone said, you're in my seat, get up? That happened to me yeah. one time. Not here, but it did happen to me in a church. It was her home church, actually. <laughs> mm -hmm. um, I, th I think people have experiences where they're not necessarily angry with the Lord but they're angry with those that are active in a church yeah. who represent the Lord. Represent the Lord. Um, someone who, I had a coach uh, years ago, he, um, his wife was in church every time the doors were open. He would never go. I don't know the whole story, but as I understand it, uh, he was, he lost a parent early on in his life. And a Christ follower said, the Lord will heal him, mm. and it didn't happen. Mm. 
So he becomes bitter. Yep. He doesn't trust the church. He doesn't trust people. Um, so I think oftentimes people, for one reason or another, they feel like they, they don't know what to believe. They've been given false uh, theology, false advice, right. things that, that aren't necessarily true. And as a result, they are bitter toward the church. And uh, they don't want to have anything to do with it. So I think if, if a spouse can get to the heart of that, then there can be a, you know, some sort of resolution. Pill but but people value. screw up so many times. I mean, it's just, yeah. I'm reminded of Luke chapter 7 when Jesus went to the home of the Pharisee named Simon. And um, the, the, the woman who had lived a sinful life mm -hmm. came up behind him. And she wet his feet with her tears and poured perfume on his feet and dried them with her hair. And the, the, the Pharisee doesn't understand why she's doing it. Mm -hmm. um, you know, what right type of relationship would, would that woman have had in that town mm -hmm. with the Pharisee? More likely than not, what I know about Pharisees is he would have walked around the street to mm -hmm. avoid her. Right. Yet somehow she's come in contact with Jesus. You know, her life was changed. Mm -hmm. So... The Pharisee was the one who represented God for the people of that town. And I yeah. don't know, you just, how many times do we do things that significantly impact people's relationship with the Lord, whether we realize it or not? And yeah. uh, as a result, it, it lingers. That's a great point. Sometimes we have to uh, lose our religion in order to find Christ. Yeah. Yeah. It sounds so bad, but. Yeah. Yeah. There are toxic things that happen sometimes. You were about to say something a minute ago. Well, I, and, and sometimes, too, it's not the spouse. Unfortunately, it's not the spouse that's not going to get through to them. Right. Um, right. Sometimes another it's guy, somebody else way. that is going to plant the seed. So possibly if they get to know somebody else in the Sunday school, it's another mm -hmm. couple. They have them over. True. You bet. Somebody in that couple can actually reach him. Yep. Um, because once again, of the pride, maybe he doesn't want to say, and this is not just for men. There, sure. there are many men that come with their children. I have seen them. So it's, it's vice versa, but it's, it's all about being able to plant those seeds. Mm -hmm. And unfortunately, sometimes we may not be the ones that mm -hmm. get through mm -hmm. to somebody. Um, That's a great point. I look, I baptized a guy a while back who, um, you know, men are typically more task oriented. Mm -hmm. So sitting in a what they fear is a lecture or a discussion of the Bible that they don't know is intimidating and it's not appealing. Mm -hmm. But if some guys from the class say, we're going to your thing, we're going on the ATV, we're going hiking, mm -hmm. we're going here and there, we're going to the football game. I know a guy that his teacher invited him to a, a football game and by halftime, they'd gotten into some pretty heavy-duty discussions mm -hmm. on spirituality. Sure, sure. By the time they're walking through the parking lot to go to their car after the game, he had led this young man to know Christ personally. Mm -hmm. And, you know, it never was intended, but that's exactly I've how I've shared it scripture happens. many times with yeah. guys after ball games out in the parking lot. Yeah. And that's what I was going to say. Yeah. I'm, I'm a big advocate for that um, in watching my father that was how he reached a lot of people. Mm -hmm. Especially men. Um, the, especially men the men. have to be. The <laughs> men basketball and, and uh, baseball, he was real adamant about that yeah. and mm -hmm. loved that. Um, but that was a great way to be able to bring some of the guys in the community that were like, listen, I'm not putting my foot in that church building. It is not happening. Yeah. Well, don't you know, my dad would get a hold of them and yeah. a year later they're putting they that eat foot those in the church. That's right. <laughs> Thank you. Uh, Drown family, the Gallagher's are watching, um, several Ready other, the Smiths. The, the Oh, oh I do. Question. I have a question here. Let me see if I can find it. What? Uh, this is from Lisa Smith. What three <laughs> words will resolve conflict for you? What three words will resolve conflict for you? Ryan Beckman's watching too. Who you know? What three words? I'm done. No, I'm good. <laughs> That's two words. That's not it. You got one more. I'm so done. Um, <laughs> probably, she's probably thinking, I love you. Yes, would be a good it. thing for me to good say answer. to my wife. Yes. I love you. I didn't do the church answer. But, you know, <laughs> why, why use three words when two will do? Yes, dear, will work as well. Yes, yes dear. That's a great one. That one would work. That's the whole uh, crux premarital counseling, so. too, by the way. When <laughs> you learn, you're dear. right, and yes, dear. That's all you need or, to know. Or, yeah, let's pray about it. That's Ooh. four. That's four words. That's four. Pray. Oh, let's pray. Let's pray. Well, I tell you, this has been very helpful. I think that um, 
to you. I'm just grateful that um, this couple is in places of leadership in this church. Their their spiritual maturity and their desire for the Lord and their ability to lead other couples and and quasi mentor them. By the way, we we have plenty of older couples here who provide great mentorship. If any of you are looking for that, uh, yeah. we do Bible studies. We will be doing this uh, the next two or three Tuesday nights. We're going to be doing a teaching series later this year on marriage and family here at our church. And so stay tuned to Facebook, check out the website, get on our email list. Come Sunday, we'd love to, to uh, engage with you about the basics of, of Bible study for comprehension and for application because that, to me, is still the foundational basics of every good marriage. Yep. So I'm proud of Travis and Melissa. I happen to know your parents, mm -hmm. and I know your mom, <laughs> yep. and it's not hard for me to imagine how they've gotten spiritually where they are because you had very godly parents, too. Drug, drug problem. Yep. Drug problem. Drug has to drug church every That's church right. Every week. And so we're just glad that, <laughs> glad that you've tuned in today. I, I want to thank Joshua and Braden, our brains behind this thing, yes. um, with the technology that they have. And so... Can I pray for all of you out there? Um, send this on to some folks, some couples that might need a little bit of encouragement tonight, if you will, and tune in next week or come see us online or in person on Sunday. Let's pray together. Father, I thank you for the Moors, and I pray that uh, you'll continue to bless them in their pursuits. Professionally is one thing, but also I know how active they are in the community and trying to set up good forums to where... Our community is stronger uh, through the root cause of the relationship with Christ there too. And uh, thank you for all the uh, all the people in co-ed situations that they're able to to teach and to lead and encourage every week here also. So God, we just need we, we continue to need your wisdom. Um, I believe we continue to see our culture just crumble around us, and I believe the basis of that is we have lost the strength of the American family unit. And we've redefined it, we've reworked it, we've reconstructed it so many ways that it's lost its meaning. And people now are like those sheep without a shepherd. So may the great shepherd be active in all of our viewers' lives this week. And we ask it in Jesus' name. Amen. Thank you again. So long until next time. Hey. <laughs>